So as a Hispanic Latino working at NASA, I do offer a unique perspective that may not always be readily apparent to my other colleagues. People on your team, if they all look alike, if they all think alike, you're not going to innovate. My mother um, crossed over um, from Mexico into the United States when she was four years old and, and she tells me the story of remembering being uh, carried on her father's shoulders as he crossed the Rio Grande. I am 100% uh, Salvadorian, uh, born in El Salvador actually. Uh, my family and I moved to uh, Florida in the 1980s during the Civil War in El Salvador. Well, I was born in Ecuador. When I was four years old, a little younger even, my family and I, we moved to South Florida. So I identify as Ecuadorian, although I do have American citizenship, um, and I try to go down there every two years just to keep uh, reconnected with my roots. I'm Mexican-American, and my father is from Chihuahua, Mexico, and came to the United States when he was a teenager. My mom's side of the family is actually Spanish. I um, appreciate in my parents, specifically my father, because when he came here, he didn't know English, and the jobs that he was able to get at that time were with his hands, labor, and that kind of instilled in me the, that I had opportunities that he never did. My grandfather, so he used to live in a trailer outside of my aunt's house. We would go there on the weekends, and I was always, my mom always told me, bring two or three cans of soup. And so I would take my little cans of soup and I would knock on his trailer door, and I would hand him the soup, and he would always say, Tenga, una peseta, mija. And, and he'd give me a quarter. No matter where I am in the world, um, I always make it home for Christmas. Uh, my sister, you know, spends hours and hours making tamales. Um, and she does that once a year, and it's when I come home for Christmas. So she always says she does it for me. My mom and dad took me to Kennedy Space Center. And there's a picture of us standing next to a F1 engine, a Saturn V engine. I know looking at that picture, that moment built upon other moments that put it in my, in my head that I have to work here one day or do something like related to NASA one day. When I moved to DC, I applied for an internship with Marshall Space Flight Center. But I, I almost didn't apply for it. The reason I waited is because I said, why would anyone choose me? Why would NASA want someone like me? And someone close to me told me, let them tell you no. Don't tell yourself no. I actually got to take my seven-year-old niece, uh, Johanny, um, to sit in in this uh, session and then actually get to meet Joe Acaba. The minute he got on stage, her, her face just lit up. And next thing I know, she gets up and goes to the mic and actually asks a question. But this is all that I work for, right? To motivate and inspire the next generation. And so at that moment, I said, yeah, this is awesome thankful to be here at NASA because most people just think of NASA as an agency that has engineers and scientists, which they have great people that do those types of jobs every day, or astronauts, obviously. But as an attorney, I would really love to leave a legacy that shows that I contributed to NASA in some meaningful way. I've had the, uh, the great fortune of being selected to be a flight director, um, part of it, a very elite group, even more elite than the astronauts. Um, We've had over 500 astronauts in the history of NASA's space flight program, um, but we have had only 96 flight directors. And of those 96, we've only had 16 women. I'd like to see that 16 number increase, you know, two, threefold over the next 10 years. You know, being um, a migrant uh, Latina at NASA, uh, there's a lot of responsibility on your shoulders, and so I just hope that future generations understand that you know, you had a lot of people that paved the way, and you know, it takes a lot of hard work, but then you also get this opportunity to do amazing things and always, always give back somehow, some way.